YouTube. I don't know if you guys had the same experience that I did with my Corvette, but uh, what happened with me was I'd be driving and it would seem to warm up and then suddenly my lights would go out and I would have no headlights and um, I could turn the switch on or to automatic and nothing would happen. If I pulled back on the lever to flash, my bright lights would come on, but not anything else. As soon as I let go of the lever, uh, it would go dark and I had to limp home using my fog lights. And so a um, little research into it. And it seems like the issue might be with the uh, fuse box, which normally sits right here. I have uh, removed the top of the fuse box brought it in the garage and was able to disassemble it and inside the fuse box you've got this giant mess. So after looking at the wires I found that there was a little tiny connection right here that was disconnected and from what I understand the theory is that as the car gets warm the plastic expands and because of that little 90 degree joint there um, the copper wire gets stressed and then ends up breaking. So you can see right there, it's not making connection if I bend that up. So when it cools down, then it would reconnect and my lights would come back on. So in the morning when it was cold, my lights would work. But on the way home at night, um, after I haven't driven it, it would just stop working. So I took it apart and there was one small issue with getting it apart. Um, and I'll show you right here. So what I did is I took all of the fuses after taking a picture, several pictures, to make sure I can put it back where I got them, and removed all the connections there. And then in these spots here, there was these little things set in there, and you have your bolts that hold it all together. So these bolts here would go down through that, and would then connect each of these to the fuse box. But my issue was on the back side of this here, it was kind of riveted in place. And um, you can see how that bottom edge there, it kind of flared out. And I wasn't sure exactly how to get it apart without destroying it. So what I ended up doing was I got my drill. I got this big old fat drill bit. So now on the underside, this is what it looked like. Once you get it apart, the uh, little connections they stick up through there. And uh, so what I did is I simply got my drill bit and just drilled out a little bit. And uh, that was that enabled me to just pop those things right out. And uh, hopefully it didn't do too much damage and then hopefully it'll go back together. We'll see. So in the meantime, I had to find some wire that's going to work. And um, so I was able to find some copper wire that's the same size. And um, so we're going to see if we can put this back together again. So I got the wire up, and you can see there's a little tiny tooth on each of these here. Right there, that's where your wire is going to go through. And so you see how it right here it makes a connection, it goes through the little tooth. And um, so we're going to try to restring our wire through just like that, just feed it through, and uh, see what happened there. So I got my wire started, and uh, so we're just going to feed this thing through and follow, follow the same path. I'll probably go straight on if I'll make that little curve since that's kind of what made the weakness. I might just go straight and connect. So we'll see. Okay, so just using some needle nose pliers, just kind of shoved it down into the little groove and wired it back over to this connection. And uh, so hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll work. We'll see. Okay, so after examining with a magnifying glass, because I'm over 40, um, I don't see any other issues with the uh, wiring on this. So we're going to try to put it back together and see how this goes. Now I didn't get a video of me taking it apart, and so putting it back together will have to do. You just do the opposite of what we did. So let's see. Let's go for it. Okay, so because I did drill out those bolts, uh, I used just a paintbrush, a little paintbrush, cleaned out any uh, metal shavings because there were some metal shavings. I don't want anything to get in there and short anything out that shouldn't be there. So cleaned it up real good. You can see some of the metal shavings there. You don't want those getting in there, messing things up. So there's the bottom. Now this can only go in one way. So 
So just kind of sit right in there like that. And then the top of your box here is going to slip right on top. So your lid can only go in one way as well. I'm going to slip that right over there. Okay, so now you can see the prongs coming through. So this is seated in properly. Now I just need to get my middle. And so I'm going to set them back in there. Okay, so I got all four of them in there seated well. And so you can see from the bo bottom, this is what they look like poking through. And they kind of beveled out, and that's the part I had to drill out in there. But I don't think it's going to be a problem. So now the fun part is going to be putting these connections all back together. Okay, so when I took them apart, I really didn't pay attention exactly to what relays were in there and whatnot. And um, come to find out, there's really only two different um, gray ones. Now I have a 2011 Grand Sport. I don't know if all uh, Corvettes have the same exact... Oh, hello there, kitty. Um, no, 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 he wants to move. Um, I don't know if all Corvettes have the same uh, setup or not. But um, So there's two black ones, two variations of the gray, and then... Um, you know, the fuses and stuff. So, um, pretty simple. Let's just put it back together. I'm just going to follow the pictures that I took earlier and make sure you take pictures before you start. Okay. Are you helping? You're not supposed to be on the table, dude. Thank you. So, I'm not an electrician. I don't even have any idea what this is, but it looks to me like there's an arrow on this one here. And um, I don't know, it may be important to put that the right direction. I'm assuming this is the way that the picture it originally came, so that's the way I'm putting it. Okay, so that one, and there's another one, and there's another one. Uh, like I said, I don't know if they're supposed to be that direction, but that's the way they came, so that's the way I put them. So this didn't take me as long as I thought. Um, only in a few minutes and um, got those back in, so now we're going to start with these guys. Okay, so those are all nice and tight there, and we'll start on these blocks here. It's like, Le like Legos. Not too bad. Okay, so I basically got them all back in except for the last one. Now this one here has five little connections coming up the bottom, so this one will go one way. And the gray ones, though, they only have four, so they can go either way. Um, I just put them back exactly the same way as my picture had them. I don't know if it makes any difference or not. Um, somebody could probably let us know in the comments. But um, So there we go. That's back together. Now let's see if we can get it put in the car and see what happens. Thanks for your help, Kitty. And I called you dude earlier. I'm sorry, Missy. Yes. Okay, so I just got to get this, these bottom things plugged in to the bottom of this. Alright, so it actually just went on. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to have to plug them in individually from the back side, but I just sat it on there and kind of put a little pressure on it, wiggle it around, and it kind of snapped in place, and I think we're okay. If you look down there, the um, bolts are going to go down in there, and we'll see if they make a connection and grab those uh, connections on the bottom. And uh, let's see what we have here. So these are just going to slide down in there. We have to get past the little, the little uh, teeth that keep them from coming up. And then we'll screw them in place and see if they uh, make connection. There's basically these four little tabs down here, there, one right here, one right here, and then another on the front side. And those, sorry, those tabs will need to uh, snap down and make connection. And um, all right, so then we'll get the screws in. Okay, so just get in there and make sure that those make connection. And don't forget to reconnect your battery power here. Right there. Snap the lid on, and of course, because we've been doing electrical, we have disconnected the negative terminal from the battery, so we're going to reconnect that. 
So it was a 13 millimeter under this one here. And for my battery, we're looking at a 10 millimeter connection here. I'm just gonna cinch that down. All right, and let's give it a shot, see what happens. All right, so we got lights there, that's a good sign. Got the power. Hey, she starts. So I'm gonna, oh, I missed you too. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my lights here and uh, see if they come on. Okay, got my daytime running light, got my low beams. I'll flip it to bright. And bingo, got both high and low going. Okay, so like I said, when I when I first had this issue, it was after I had run it for a while and uh, things had warmed up. So um, I'll have to get back with you and run it for a few days and we'll see if it, um, it actually worked. So uh, if that was your problem, you know, hopefully I was a little help to you. All right, uh, you don't have to like, subscribe or whatever. Uh, because I'm not trying to grow my channel. I just wanted to be a help to you guys. So hopefully it was helpful. Okay, so I got this thing, drove it around a little bit, filled up on some gas, went and got some food, drove it around, gave it a little time for it to warm up the fuse box, and it seems like it is working. Okay, my headlights come on, brights, and um, so yeah, hopefully this uh, fixed my problem.